Although it wasn't quite as big of a dumpster fire as 2020, 2021 was still a hot mess of a year. The virus that shall remain unnamed was still looming over everyone like a potentially deadly rain cloud. No one was sure if they were supposed to be indoors, outdoors, or shaking it all about doors, and the headlines were dominated by lots of doom and gloom. Still, at least we had video games to get us through it, and for this video, we're back once again with a best of X year list. In case you hadn't cottoned on, today's X stands for 2021. As ever, a game can qualify for this list if it was released in the year in question and got a minimum of seven professional reviews. Remakes and remasters are absolutely welcome, but ports, re-releases, and collections definitely are not. If they were good enough, you'll find them in the video that relates to their original release year. Got all that? Then let's crack on. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are the 10 best games of 2021. Number 10. Metroid Dread, 88%. Prior to the release of Metroid Dread, fans of Samus Aran's spacefaring adventure had been waiting for over a decade for a fresh mainline Metroid title, and whilst some might say that 11 years is far too long to wait for a follow-up, others would probably agree that the lengthy hiatus was worth it, considering just how good Metroid Dread turned out to be. Chronologically speaking, Metroid Dread takes place after 2001's Metroid Fusion and follows bounty hunter Samus Aran as she investigates a transmission on the planet ZDR. Gameplay follows the traditional Metroid formula, so side-scrolling action is the order of the day, though the devs have thrown in just a sprinkle of stealth for good measure. Critics praised the game for its masterful execution of traditional Metroidvania elements whilst also lauding the new additions. They were also pleased with the highly detailed environments, the wide variety of enemies and bosses on offer, and the level of choice offered to players when it came to exploration. There were a lot of things to dread in 2021, but it would seem that playing the latest instalment in the Metroid franchise wasn't one of them. Number 9. Deathloop, 88%. Xbox fans might have been celebrating Microsoft's acquisition of Bethesda when the merger was finalized in March 2021, but PS5 owners got one last laugh in the form of timed exclusive Deathloop, which they got to enjoy an entire year before Xbox Series players could get their hands on it. Deathloop sees players taking on the role of Colt, an assassin who must take out, as in murder and not for dinner, eight targets before midnight. The twist? Failed to kill all of them, and the time loop that Colt is stuck in will reset, undoing all of his hard work. In order to ensure Colt's success, players Players must learn the target's routines and come up with a plan for how to kill all of them before the day is through. The game enjoyed a warm reception from critics who were impressed by the implementation of the time loop mechanic, the audio-visual presentation, writing, wide variety of weapons and gadgets, and the performance of the voice actors. Deathloop was also compared favorably to Dishonored, with critics commending the combination of stealth and action. Thankfully, Deathloop is now available on all current generation platforms, so everyone can get in on the wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey, assassin-y stuff. Number 8. Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart 88% the Ratchet & Clank series has been around for over two decades now and continues to go from strength to strength as evidenced by the PS5 exclusive Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. After Dr. Nefarious attempts to steal a device called the Dimensionator and it's accidentally fired by Ratchet, a number of interdimensional rifts open and our eponymous heroes and their arch nemesis are transported to another universe where Nefarious is able to assume the role of Emperor. Gameplay-wise, players can expect the usual Ratchet & Clank fare, i.e. platforming, gunplay, and lots of upgrades, and if you're sick of playing as Ratchet, then there's good news, as female Lombax Rivet is also a playable character. Rift Apart released to a decent critical response, with the main bulk of reviewers' compliments being directed towards the game's visuals, the design of the environment, and the core gameplay loop and combat. It was also commended for its short load times, the excellent utilization of the DualSense controller, and for generally making great use of the PS5 hardware. It's a good job the game was so good, really. It wouldn't want to have been Rift Apart by critics. <laughs> no, that was terrible. Number 7. Death Store, 89%. Do your hobbies include playing Souls-like video games and pursuits of the ornithological variety? Then, oh boy, or girl, or other, are you going to get a kick out of this entry? Released in July 2021 for Xbox One, Series, and PC, and in the November of the same year for PS4, PS5, and Switch, Death's Door is a 3D isometric action-adventure title in which players hop into the feathers of a small crow whose job it is to collect souls for the Reaping Commission headquarters, which is basically the afterlife, but with more admin. Our little Corvine friend starts out with a sword and a bow and and must head out into the world, explore and solve puzzles in order to get to the bottom of a conspiracy surrounding the disappearance of other crows. A number of reviewers compared Death's Door favorably to the Dark Souls series, though they conceded that it was nowhere near as serious in tone or severe in difficulty as From Software's rage-inducingly difficult titles. They praised Death's Door's simplicity, its tight gameplay mechanics, and its sense of humor, and commended the devs for creating such a wonderfully quirky title. 
Number 6. Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury 89% Hang on a minute, I hear you screech at your screen. You said you didn't include re-releases in these rankings. What gives? Well, dear viewer, we usually don't, but since Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury is a re-release bundled with a whole extra game, we're willing to give it a pass. Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury is an enhanced port of 2013's Super Mario 3D World that comes with new campaign Bowser's Fury. The former stars Mario as he attempts to rescue the fairy-like Sprixies from Bowser who has invaded their kingdom whilst the latter also stars Mario, but this time he teams up with Bowser Jr. in order to put a stop to Bowser. The game was a hit with critics, who sang the same praises for Super Mario 3D World that they did when it was originally released in 2013, i.e. great audiovisual presentation, fun gameplay and outstanding design, whilst also applauding Bowser's fury for its experimental nature and inventive approach to open-world gameplay. It may have had its flaws, namely the odd technical hiccup here and there, but it's still a must-play for fans of the little mustachioed Italian plumber. Number 5. It Takes Two, 89%. Get those tissues at the ready, folks, we've got an emotional one on our hands. It Takes Two tells the story of Cody and May, a married couple on the verge of divorce. When their daughter, Rose, overhears them arguing, she attempts to repair their relationship by play-acting with a pair of handmade dolls. However, when her tears land on the dolls, her parents become trapped inside their bodies and they must work together and overcome their marital problems in order to revert to their human forms. The game is a multiplayer-only title, so players will need to buddy up with a pal, either in person or online, in order to take on its puzzles and platformer-inspired levels. Critics were incredibly kind to It Takes Two, praising the co-op gameplay, the wide variety of levels that were inspired by different genres, and its charming and incredibly moving story. It wasn't that moving, really, though, was it? It was a bit silly. But fun, though. To date, more than 10 million copies of the game have been sold, and it has received a whole bunch of awards, including the Game of the Year accolade at the 2021 TGAs. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got a plush elephant to cry over. Number 4. Mass Effect Legendary Edition 90% We've got a bit of a treat for you now, chums, as this entry is three games for the price of one. Don't say we're never nice to you. By 2021, it had been the best part of 15 years since the original Mass Effect came out, and though still a brilliant game, it was showing some signs of age. Luckily, someone at Bioware and or EA recognised this as a problem, and thus Mass Effect Legendary Edition was born. Comprised of remasters of Mass Effect, Mass Effect 2 and Mass Effect 3, the Legendary Edition gives players the opportunity to experience the epic space opera with shiny new graphics, gameplay improvements, and various technical enhancements. Mass Effect Legendary Edition went down with critics like Cold Lemonade on a sunny afternoon. They were impressed with all three games, though most of their praise was directed at the remaster of the original Mass Effect, which had received more updates than the sequels due to its age. Reviewers lauded the graphical updates, the inclusion of all of the previously released DLC, and the convenience of all three games being in one package. Put simply, if you're looking to play Mass Effect these days, the Legendary Edition is the way to do it. Number 3. Chicory A Colourful Tale 90% Whilst dramatic space operas and emotive tales of dysfunctional families are all well and good, every so often you just want to play a cute, colourful game with an adorable dog protagonist. Chicory A Colourful Tale is exactly that. In Chicory A Colourful Tale, players control a cutesy canine that they name after their favourite food. For the purposes of this entry, though, we'll refer to them as Pizza. Pizza is the janitor for Chicory, the wielder of The Brush, a magical paintbrush that's passed down from generation to generation and brings colour to the world. However, when all the colour is drained from the world, and Chicory falls into a Great Depression, it's up to Pizza to put things right. In terms of gameplay, players can expect exploration, puzzle solving and boss fights that take the form of bullet hell segments where projectiles must be dodged and the brush used to damage the adversary. The game was commended for its satisfying puzzles, painting mechanic and its narrative, which didn't shy away from serious topics such as grief and identity struggles. Hang on a minute, this supposedly cutesy game has made me feel things I've been had. Number 2. Psychonauts 2 – 91% the original Psychonauts was released all the way back in 2005, and following its debut, fans were clamouring for a sequel. Well, if you didn't have a VR headset and couldn't play Psychonauts in the Rhombus of Ruin, it was a bit of a wait. 16 years long, to be exact, but in 2021, non-VR-owning players' wishes came true when Psychonauts 2 was released. As in the first game, players step into the shoes of Raz, an acrobat training to be a Psychonaut, a member of an organisation that aims to put a stop to the individuals who use their psychic powers for misdeeds. Taking place directly 
shortly after Rhombus of Ruin, Psychonauts 2 sees Raz trying to work out who is responsible for the disappearance of the organization's leader, unearthing a mystery surrounding its establishment and his own family history as he does so. Despite there being the best part of two decades between Psychonauts and Psychonauts 2, most critics concluded that the sequel was well worth the wait. The story and characters were praised for being deep and well written, as were the colourful art style and creatively designed levels, and the game's treatment of its serious issues such as mental health was applauded for its sensitivity. In short, you'd have to be a psycho naught to check this one out, like a like naught as in zero. You'd have to be a zero. Okay? Good. Number one. Forza Horizon 5, 92%. Zooming into pole position on today's list is Forza Horizon 5, the 12th installment in the Forza series and the 4th sequel to 2012's Forza Horizon. Numbers there. Like its predecessors, Forza Horizon 5 is a racing game set in an open world, and players are able to hop into a car and freely explore, taking in all of the sights that are on offer in a fictionalised version of Mexico, from volcanoes and jungles to towns and cities. Because Mexico has such a diverse landscape, the devs implemented a new weather system, and whilst the four seasons still exist, they affect each part of the game's map in different ways. There's also the addition of a brand new Horizon Arcade, which consists of mini-games such as Piñata Pop that are dotted around the world. Critics showered Forza Horizon 5 with praise, calling out its finely tuned gameplay, variety of events, and stunning open world as particular highlights. Many considered the title to be the best Horizon game to date, and this was reflected in its average review score. So congratulations to you, Forza Horizon 5, for being the most brilliant game of 2021. With that, I think I'll take Take a bit of a break. Our best games of 2023 list isn't due for a few months after all. Thanks for watching.